You probably know the verses in John 13. And Jesus says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Very clear words, aren't they? I mean, there, it wasn't... Yeah, there's some parts of Scripture you think, oh, what does that mean? And, you know, you hassle about this and that. Very clear. And most of what Jesus said was. And uh, that, that's the theme I want to look at this morning. I've given a handout. If Some of you may have it. Others may not. I, I just took some of the verses in the Bible that use that phrase, to love one another. Love one another. Uh, our theme this year is from Acts chapter 20. Uh, you, you've seen it around and... Uh, and he says in Acts 20, verse 20, how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things I want you to take note of is the setting of when he was saying that. I don't know if you've read Acts chapter 20, but he's about to leave, and he calls the elders from Ephesus. <laughs> And has them come, and he, he talks to them. And basically what he says to them is, I love you. And he says it in, in, uh, in a lot of words, in a lot of different ways. Um, in verse 20, he said, I, I gave you everything that you need. I gave you my all for you. Uh, later on in verse 34, he said, I, I worked hard. And verse 35, he said, I worked hard so that I, I could bless you. And he, he quotes Jesus and says, it's more blessed to give than to receive. That was his attitude toward them. He'd given, and he'd given, and he'd given. And now he was, he was telling them, you'll probably never see me again. And look at their response in verse 36. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. Sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. Uh, our subject this morning is love one another. Uh, love is, is such a wonderful thing, and yet it can be quite a painful thing as well. Uh, you invest your love in, into people, and sometimes it, uh, you, you know, that, that, that ends. A lot of relationships that you'll have in life uh, will be temporary. I mean, that's, that's just the, the nature of life, isn't it, for us? Um, but their, their response was because they, they loved each other. And as we saw in John chapter 13, God says this is a command. You know, I, I find we, we kind of take this as, well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. But he says, a new commandment I give unto you that you, that you love one another. And uh, he, he doesn't have to keep recommanding it. Uh, several times in Scripture you'll find when they'll mention, now I don't really have to say this to you. In uh, 1 Thessalonians, for instance, verse, chapter 4 and verse 9, as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. He said, I don't, I don't really have to write to you about this, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Right. Yeah, there are just some things about the Christian life that God shouldn't really have to keep reminding us, but He does. <laughs> And he keeps loving us and, and giving us that example. Uh, there's a couple times in the book of 1 John when, when it's mentioned as well, when he says in 1 John 3.11, this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. In, the first, in the 2 John verse 5, he's writing to uh, this lady, and not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning that we love one another. So, you know, the Bible is saying, this is not something that is new. This is not something, oh, you mean I'm supposed to love other Christians? <laughs> uh, this is something that is right from the beginning that, that God has given to us. And one of the, the interesting things about that statement in John chapter 13 is he says, this is how people will see that we're his disciples. Isn't that interesting? You know, I can think of a lot of other things, how people would know that you're a follower of Christ. You, know, you knock on their door and you, and you witness to them. Or, you know, there's, there's lots of things. But the one he particularly brings out is our relationship as believers. To me, that means it's important. 
Um, and he says they're going to know that you're his disciple. The, the term Christian actually was used kind of as, a, as mocking us. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we take that. And, uh, you know, oftentimes we call ourselves Christians. We call others Christians. But Jesus' call was for us to be his disciples. That means followers of Christ. And there's a lot of statements about that. Uh, it means we make Christ our life. It means we take up his cross if we're his disciple. It means we deny ourselves. It means we continue in God's word. Then we're his disciples. It means we bear fruit. It means we love the brethren. There's a lot of things involved in being a disciple of Christ. Let me ask you this question. I don't want any answers or raised hands here, but what do people know about your relationship to Jesus by what they see of your love for other Christians, especially your church? Yeah, I think that's important for us to consider it in that way. People need to be seeing that sometimes you're sacrificing to be a part of your church. Sometimes you're sacrificing other things and you're investing yourself because of your love for the, for the brethren. Well, I've, I've given you some verses there this morning on that sheet of paper. Uh, what does God teach us that this love involves? And he says a lot. <laughs> There's quite a few things. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10, uh, the first one is about brotherly love. Romans chapter 12 and verse 10, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Now, there's a whole set of statements there about how we should live. But this particular one, he says, be kindly affectionate, affectioned one to another with brotherly love. Uh, just being friendly, being kind. Now, we should be kind people. And he relates it to honor, uh, respecting others, putting others first. Uh, he, he states it more strongly later in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. I find this a, a, a strange statement, but uh, interesting. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. God says we need to love each other. He says we need to do it in a pure way and in a, a fervent way. That means really investing ourselves in it. Uh, this is not just something we do when, if we get a chance. Uh, this is something we, we invest in. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, I'm, I meant to stay there, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 and, and verse 8, he uses this expression, finally, be ye all of one mind, have compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. <laughs> now you might say, yeah, I know somebody who's pretty pitiful. Now, well, he's talking about your attitude towards others. Have pity on others. You know, you, you really appreciate it when somebody has pity on you. It's just really nice when someone sees our need and has pity. Uh, he says, be pitiful, be courteous. Uh, this is an attitude of, of brotherly love, compassion, pity, courtesy. I was thinking about it this week, and I thought, you know, what are just some practical things we can do to show brotherly love? You know, one of the things I learned in, in Bible college is learn people's names. Learn who people are. You know, ask them about it, and, and don't be embarrassed to ask them again. You know, sometimes you only see people once in a while, but uh, you learn their name. Uh, know what's going on in their life. Pray for them. When, when you say you're going to pray for them, do it. If you think you'll forget later, do it right then. I mean, where else could we stand and pray together that would be suitable than at church? I mean, really. I remember being at a church and people were standing there praying. I thought, yeah, that's, boy, I like seeing that, you know. Uh, you don't have to make a big show of it, and you don't have to pray a long time, but if somebody has a need, listen, pray with them. Uh, be pitiful, be courteous, uh, respect them, uh, show hospitality. Uh, if there's a problem, forgive them, uh, work out the problem. We're all in this together. Uh, we're a body of Christ. Uh, we're fellow seekers, we're family. Uh, have brotherly love. In Romans 13 and verse 8, then, in my Bible, just across the page, he says, O no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. I'm going to read the next verse. He says, For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Boy, there's some great things there in, in the, those verses. Love adds a constancy to your life, a consistency, maybe I should say, to your life. You have a consistent debt. You say, Pastor, you've been looking at my bank book. No, I'm not talking about your money. You have a debt of love. That's what he's talking about there in, in verse 8. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. When you flip that around and understand what he's saying, he's saying, oh, the debt of love. That's a debt. That's a constant. And I can guarantee you, love will cost you. Love will cost you. Keep investing yourself in the bank of love because someday you're going to want to make a withdrawal. And as a man, whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, love is so important. We, we all value love. And the main thing we need to do is give it. Invest yourself uh, with love. Someday you're going to want to draw on that account. There's a constant debt, but as well, and this is encouraging, verse 10, there's a constant guide. Did you notice that? Love is the fulfilling of the law. Sometimes when you look at things, you think, boy, you know, I don't know what to do. I better ask the pastor, or you know, I better ask somebody who knows. Listen, God says the, the basic rule is what will show love? <coughs> What will show my love to God and to this person that's involved? And most problems have a person involved, don't they? Uh, that's, that's a constant. And in loving one another, that will help us. It will help us to put us in the right place. We're debtors. God loved us. And we need to, to pass that on. And it will also guide us. The third one there is in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13 He says, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Now we see a principle here. Love overrides liberty. God has said we're, we have liberty. In chapter Galatians 5, 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know, when you get saved, you're set free. Uh, it, it's an amazing thing. You have liberty, but he says, don't use that in a selfish way. That's what he's talking about when he says, for an occasion to the flesh. Don't use your liberty just for you. Use it for others. Uh, use it to love. Uh, love will cause us to serve. Let me stop and think about it. What does a servant do? Well, they prepare for others. When something's going to happen, they say, oh, we better get ready for this. They clean up when it's done. They say, well, we've done something. We better get ready for the next thing. <laughs> uh, that's servant. That's being a servant. It's looking at others and, others and thinking, well, how can I make it work for them? How can I make it uh, be a blessing? Now, God has a rule. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh, and the danger in all of this is to put it in the negative and say, well, they don't love me down at that church. Well, listen, you start a trend. <laughs> Be a trendsetter. You, know, you do the loving. And uh, let God be true and every man a liar. You know? uh, he says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly and, and so on. Uh, love causes us to serve. Uh, be the servant. If we're going to have fights around here, let's fight about who's going to be the servant. <laughs> no, you got to serve last time. Let me serve. <laughs> Uh, next verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 12. I mentioned that you know, God says a lot about this subject. Love one another. I like being loved. Yeah, I, I love it when people say, I, I love you, Pastor, and praying for you or whatever. And you know what a blessing it is to be able to give that to others. 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, and toward all men, even as we do toward you. Uh, he's encouraging them to grow and overflow <laughs> in love. That sounds like a, a good theme for a message. Uh, increase and abound. And the thing that I found really encouraging is, you know, that's the first letter to the Thessalonians. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. And the charity, the love of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. He's able to say, you're doing it. 
You're growing. You're abounding. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what we want to see. You know, we don't want to get worse. We don't want to backslide. We don't want to just stay the same. We want to grow in love. And uh, we're going to do that by extending ourselves, by sacrificing uh, ourselves for, for others. Grow and abound. Then another in Hebrews chapter 10 and uh, verse 24. I like this one partly just because of one of the words he uses. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. He says, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. <laughs> There's plenty of people that are provoking, but it's not always for good things. And God is telling us here to incite others to good things. First of all, he says, consider others. That, that word just means notice them. Don't just come to church and don't just live your life without noticing others. See what's going on. See who they are. Notice them in love, but I should add. And don't just be irritated by them and think, oh, here comes so-and-so, I don't want to see them. Um, I've had a few experiences like that this week. Uh, consider others. Notice them. But secondly, provoke them. Uh, people should be better for having associated with you. Uh, provoke them to pray. And, and I don't mean just be such a nuisance to them that they'll pray for you. Uh, uh, provoke them to witness. Provoke them to hospitality. The, the way you do that is by doing it to them and by doing it with them. You know, if you're going to go out witnessing, call up somebody. Say, listen, can you come with me? After you've called about 10 people, you, you might get one. <laughs> you know, if you're going to have a meal, we had a friend, he said, I can always add water to the soup. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be a big meal. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Show hospitality. Provoke them to love. Uh, that's fellowship. That's what fellowship is. We do it together. Uh, we teach people how to do things. We do it with them and so on. Let me make an application in Acts chapter 2. You turn there to Acts, uh, the book of Acts chapter 2. This was the day of Pentecost, and as Jesus preached, man, people got saved. We were talking about the, uh, the crucifixion this morning in Sunday school. People saw things happen that would never have gone away. You know, graves opened and bodies coming out of the graves and the sky darkened and so on. And when Peter preached at Pentecost, you know, what was that, 40 days later, people got saved. They said, this, this is of God. And uh, in uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 41, it says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. I go down to verse 46. They, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Uh, folks, that, that's fellowship. Uh, that's what it is. We're, we're one in Christ. You know, these people met together at church and at home. Uh, they studied the Bible together. They prayed together. They ate together, and their hearts were in one accord. I don't believe that when he says there they, they broke bread. He's not talking about the Lord's Supper there. You can see the context of, of verse 46, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. He's talking about hospitality. You know, they were together, and they were in, encouraging each other in the Lord. And this happens because they all were drawing from the same source. The source of love is God. God is love. Uh, turn, if you would, to 1 John uh, chapter 4. First John chapter 4, verse 10. <clears throat> Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. See, the place you start is with Jesus. Don't start with others. Start from the source. Start with Jesus. Uh, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. You need to determine... Do you know God? Are you born of God? You know, Jesus talked about being born again. You must be born again. You, you need to have a relationship with God through Jesus. 
And the Bible says that happens by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You know, we've got to believe God. We have to enter into that relationship with him. Uh, 1 John 5, 1, he he's, makes it very specific. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat, that's God, loveth him also that is begotten of him. That, that's us, and that's Jesus. Uh, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Have you entered into faith in, in God? In uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, he gives a, an indicator. He says, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. You know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You see, you start with God. Uh, the starting point is, is Jesus. You know, some people would read that verse and they'd say, well, Pastor, I don't hate other Christians. Well, that's not really the point. The point is, do you love them? <laughs> do you love them? What's, what's going on in your life? Um, and like I mentioned, the danger is saying, oh, they don't love me. Well, listen, you're not going to have to give an account for them. You're going to have to give an account for yourself. You need to be the one who is obeying the Lord in this. And the starting point is, is Jesus. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. We look to him and see uh, the love of God in, in Jesus Christ. In uh, chapter 4, verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. Love is of God. Yeah, I, I don't think God is going to run out if, if you take too much. You know, I don't think you can take too much or use it too much. It, one, of, one of my favorite verses on this subject is 1 John 3, 23. Uh, look at that there. This is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave his commandment. Isn't that simple? I mean, here's the basic Christian life. Believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. You know, Peter had indicated that we're, we're saved to that relationship. Not only a relationship with Christ, but loving other Christians. I believe on Jesus and love one another. Uh, in 1 John 5, verse 11, this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. See, the question is, do you have Jesus? Do you have Jesus? And you know, we often ask the question, if you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? And that's a good question. But the only way you can know you're going to heaven is if you have Jesus. <laughs> uh, the key is, do you have Jesus? Right. And uh, the Bible says you can have him. It says if, if you'll come to him, he says he'll in no wise cast you out. Uh, you know, there's, there's things where you'll miss out in this life. But God promises that if you'll come to him, if you'll come to him by faith, He'll receive you. Now, I would encourage you, uh, trust him today. If, you don't, if you're not sure whether you know him, uh, whether you've been born again, uh, trust him today. And then be his disciple. And he says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if, if you have love one to another. Uh, start with the love of God and go from there. Uh, maybe the Lord is speaking to your heart. I, I don't know how he might use this message in, in your life this morning. But uh, let me encourage you. God knows you. He knows your actions and your thoughts. And he loves you. He's proved that. And he wants you to have uh, the, the life that he intended for you. And it, it comes as you yield to him by faith. Uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds. But we know who holds tomorrow. And uh, faith in the Lord will, will see you through uh, thick or thin. Uh, whatever, whatever might happen. Let's go to the, to the Lord in, in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, we, we see our failures in this uh, many times, and yet, Lord, we're grateful that you never failed. Uh, Father, that you are, uh, you are love, and uh, that we can come to you and know your love. And Lord, that you can help us to love others. Help us as a church, Lord, to have a right attitude and right actions in, in our relationships to each other. And Lord, help us to reach out to a lost world. Uh, help us to have to see this world through your eyes, people that you love and people who need you. Uh, Lord, I, I pray if there are any here this morning that are not saved, 
Help them to trust you today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close with the song, uh, Have Thine Own Way.